Hey, welcome everybody to our 21 days of prayer and fasting. So excited to get started with you today. Day one, we're kicking it off. Prayer and fasting. Not just prayer, but prayer and fasting. You know, sometimes people say, well, can we just do 21 days of prayer uh, and leave out the fasting? Well, we should be praying every single day. So 21 days of prayer isn't really exactly what we're after here. Uh, we are coupling that together with fasting. I know that some of you think that fasting should be done in a certain way, and that's fast. Like, let's get it over with. I agree with you in so many different ways because I like to eat, but there's a reason that we fast. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about that as we kick it off today at the gathering place. And I want to encourage you, invite you to join us for the next 21 days as we take this time to really seek the Lord. Um, sometimes people wonder like, okay, what is fasting? Let's just talk about that right away. What is fasting? What are we going after? Uh, fasting is simply abstaining from food for a spiritual purpose. So when we're talking about fasting, we're not just talking about like intermittent fasting for your diet or anything like that. Uh, we're also not just talking about cutting back on things in life, but we're actually talking about specifically a biblical fast, which is cutting out food. And it's a certain amount of food. Uh, the Bible doesn't prescribe to us exactly how long our fast should be. It doesn't tell us um, how, how long we should be praying while we do it. It just says that we should do it. And so when we fast, biblically, we're fasting by cutting out food. Uh, you can still drink water, liquids, and so forth, but you're cutting out food. And that's what we're calling to. And it should be coupled together with prayer. When you're when you're fasting, you don't want to just fast uh, without praying. You want to make sure that you take time. Maybe it's time that you would normally be eating. Take that time to open up your word and uh, take time to pray. And so we'll talk a little bit about that as time goes on. But I just want to get us started. Let's set apart the next 21 days to fast. And this is what I'm calling uh, our church to is I'm inviting you to fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, some of you might feel like, uh, that's a lot. Others of you might think that's easy. I don't know where you're at. For me, it's just a little bit of a stretch. And so uh, for you, you might find that 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. is a stretch for you. And I'd say do it. Do whatever it takes to stretch your faith and to press in. For some people, though, let's talk about how to do this. If you're not comfortable with fasting, if you haven't been practicing it, if you feel like that might be something that uh, makes you fall over and die because you went for 12 hours without food, um, I would say this, start off with fasting one meal a day and set it, set like schedule, like I am not going to eat breakfast or lunch or dinner, whatever it is. For this next seven days, fast one meal a day. And then let's take the next step. The following seven days, fast two meals a day. And then let's see how you do. And the next seven days, let's fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or you might even press in a little bit more than that and say, I'm going to do a total food fast during that time. Uh, sometimes people wonder, should we even be fasting at all as Christians? Is that important for us? I mean, we have God. We have the Bible. We have the Holy Spirit. We're already saved. Should we fast? I mean, uh, is there any biblical examples? Well, of course, when you read the whole Bible, you'll see there's, there's examples of people fasting from the beginning to the end. So you see it in the Old Testament. You see David fasting. You see Elijah fasting. You see Moses fasting. And Moses actually was caught up in the presence of God. So he, he did this 40-day fast with no food and water. I don't even count that as a fast. I think that when you are in the presence of God like that, uh, some somehow, some way that your physical needs uh, don't even matter. So that's a unique situation. Uh, but you see other times when the kings of Israel fasted, you see uh, the Day of Atonement, which was a day where they, the children of Israel were supposed to fast and mourn over their sins. We don't do that. Uh, we don't have to. Christ has already atoned for our sins, and we don't uh, mourn over that uh, on a regular basis. Uh, you see Joel calling the people to a fast. And, uh, and that's just in the Old Testament and a few examples. And, of course, Isaiah 58 talks a lot about fasting as well. We'll jump into that. Um, in the New Testament, of course, you see Jesus fasting. And he went, uh, it was a common practice for the Pharisees to practice at the day. In fact, everybody kind of practiced fasting around that time, all the religious people. And uh, they noticed that Jesus' disciples did not fast. And Jesus said, hey, they, they don't need to fast when they're with me. But the days are coming when they will fast. 
And so he did teach that disciples and followers of Christ would eventually fast. You see, uh, in the book of Acts, you see fasting happening quite a few times. In fact, there's a time when Paul and Barnabas are called out into the ministry uh, during a time of worship and fasting as well. And so then they pray and fast some more and they get some clear direction. Um, the early church fasted. They, they would fast on Wednesdays and Fridays because the hypocrites, as they called them, the, the Pharisees and the religious people would fast on Mondays and Thursdays. And so they didn't want to be associated with those guys, but they knew that they need to fast and bring their, their bodies under subjection, but also press in during that time of prayer. And it's just been a practice for, for uh, throughout church history as well. So we're invited into that, and it's, it's not something new to us by any means. It's not something new to the church, and it's not something that uh, is behind us either. Uh, God has a reason for us to fast, and so... Uh, we'll talk about this over the next 21 days, but this is where we we get started right here. We get started with an attitude of faith. This is before you even approach fasting and like, oh, how am I going to do it? Uh, what am I going to do? When am I going to eat? When am, I, when am I not going to eat? What's it going to feel like? And how am I going to survive and prayer and schedule and all of those things? The very first thing we start with is an attitude of faith. We got to believe that it is God's will for I have to believe it's God's will for me to fast and that when I fast in accordance to his will, that he He rewards me. Now, you might think, uh, should we really be seeking his hand and, and not just his face? You know, it's like sometimes people say, we're here to seek your, your face, Lord, and not your hand. And I think that's baloney. I don't think that the Bible tells us seek his, hand, his face and not his hand. I think when you seek his face, you get his hand, meaning this. The scripture invites us to seek the giver of gifts. And there are times that we seek the gifts. Sometimes we don't even seek the gifts, and yet he provides them for us because that's in his nature. It's in his nature. And, and we set out this time of fasting and prayer, uh, believing that God is a rewarder. Let's look at the scripture for that. In Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 16, in fact, all of Matthew 6, Jesus is highlighting uh, three important practices. Prayer, he highlights fasting, and he highlights giving. And then he goes on to talk about the provision of God. And I just think that's interesting that he couples the provision in, in the faithfulness of God that, that follows after the emphasis on the way that we pray, the way that we fast, and the way that we give. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, Jesus said, Moreover, when you fast, not if you fast, he said, when you fast. So he's just assuming this is what you're going to do. So this is, a, this is an instruction. If you're wondering, what is God's will? Is it God's will for me to fast? Jesus said, when you fast. So that I guess that would, that would mean that it is his will. So he said, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad face, for they disfigure their faces that they might appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. What's their reward? Someone comes and pats them on the back and says, good job, you fasted. <laughs> like, you mean I suffered and that's all I got was the praise of men? Yeah, that's all you're going to get when you're doing it to be seen by men. But that's not how we do it. Jesus gives us a, a contrast here. He said, but you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. So this morning I got up, I took a shower, I anointed my head with some hair product, and um, then I washed my face and everything else too. He said, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place and your father who is in secret will reward you openly. So God is saying, when you are fasting, you're do doing this between you and him. It doesn't mean that other people can't know about it, but we're not doing it to please them or impress them. But we are doing it so that he sees this. So we are saying to him, God, I am setting myself apart to you and I'm doing it before you, and I'm doing it for you. And the Bible says God who's in the secret place, he's in that place of, of prayer is the secret place as well. When you are going to God in prayer, having fasted, the Bible says that you go into your secret place, and God who is in secret will reward you openly. So this doesn't just mean he rewards you internally, but he rewards you openly. There are some breakthroughs that are going to happen in your life because you fast and pray. 
There are some blessings coming your way because you fast and pray. There are answers to your prayers coming because you fasted and prayed. There are some things that God is going to do for you and pour out favor on your life that has everything to do with you fasting and praying. It is already God's heart and desire to do it for you, but because you fast and pray, he's going to do it. God who sees what you do in secret will reward you openly. And if there are things that you need God to do in your life or you you want God to show up in a significant way, answer, direction, provision, healing, all of those things are associated with prayer and fasting. If that scripture is not enough for you, here's the other aspect of it is in Hebrews 11.6. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So remember, we are, we are entering into this, this um, time of prayer and fasting with faith, with an attitude of faith. And Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever comes to him must believe that he is, or believe that he exists, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So to please God, there's two things that, that are required to please God. Number one, you believe that he exists. And number two, believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's interesting. God is saying, if you want to please me, you need to believe that I am a rewarder of those who seek me. So it's not just if you want to please God, you have to believe he exists. He doesn't just say, if you want to please God, you just have to obey. Well, now we do need to believe and we need to obey. But he says specifically right here, what pleases God is when you believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I'll tell you this. I don't think that there's any better um, indicator. Well, there might be. But one of the ways that we demonstrate to God that I am diligently seeking you, one of the ways that we diligently seek God, I should say, is through fasting and prayer. And when you fast and you set aside the time, you set apart your body, you set apart your desires to diligently seek him, he's a rewarder. He's a rewarder. And so that, that's just what we're doing with, the, with our bodies here. We're doing it with our time. We're doing it with our desires. We're saying, God, I'm giving all of this over to you. So that's where we get started with our prayer and fasting. Again, how, how are we going to fast? I'm fasting 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, I'm going to challenge you to do the same, enter into that with me. And uh, if that is a, if, if you've never fasted before, though, I would encourage you, um, set apart at least one meal a day over the next seven days. And then we'll step it up over the, the following seven days. You watch how God starts to show up in your life. You watch what he, he does. Uh, make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids, if you drink coffee, you might need to still drink coffee. Uh, maybe get your tea in there. Maybe you have a, a bone broth, you know, soup or something like that, that just gives you a little bit of, of nourishment and, and to get you through the day. Maybe it's a diluted juice as well. It's not Jamba juice. You know, this isn't a, this isn't a juice, juice fast where we're spending all of our time and, and money at Jamba Juice eating about 1,500 calories, which is almost all the food you need for the day in one giant drink. No, this is setting apart the time to say, God, I'm, gonna, I'm going to deny my flesh and uh, I might be hungry, but I'm going to create a hunger for you that supersedes my hunger for food. So I want to encourage you to be right back with us uh, tomorrow. You can check the video below about our daily uh, devotions that Pastor Rich is leading every single day at the gathering place. We read our Bibles. And so I want to send some videos over to you that'll just encourage you as we share our devotions as well. If you like this, share it with somebody else. And of course, we can't wait to see you on Sunday at the gathering place. God bless you.